Authorities in Limpopo believe the resumption of commercial flights at the Bulukwane International Gateway Airport will unlock economic opportunities across a range of sectors, including tourism in that province. Commercial flights had been suspended following non-compliance issues raised by the South African Civil Aviation Authority. We're joined now to establish how the provincial government plans to place the airport at the center of its economic fortunes. Uh, we're joined by Transport and Community Safety MEC Mabongo Lirule Ramakanya. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your time this afternoon. So the Aviation Authority made 14 findings against the airport for not complying with standards. Perhaps a report back to start with in terms of how these issues have been addressed. Ramakanya, it's Dudu. If you are there, please just give us perhaps a, a report back to start with in terms of the Aviation Authority's findings, 14 of them uh, of non-compliance standards. Uh, where do we sit with that and what were some of the resolutions made? Unfortunately, uh, we are not able to establish the connection. We'll keep trying and bring you details uh, of that as uh, activities resume tomorrow on the 18th of October at the Bulukwane International Gateway Airport. Apologies for that. On to this, though, ESCOM has announced this morning that it has initiated proceedings at the Johannesburg High Court to review a decision by the National Energy Regulator of South Africa to reject ESCOM's multi-year pricing plan. The energy regulator rejected the utility's application for a three-year tariff determination. NERSA says it's still working on a pricing methodology. Earlier this year, the High Court ruled that NERSA may not deduct a 69 billion rand cash injection from ESCOM's allowable revenue. It asked ESCOM to instead make an application for the 2022 2023 financial year. The power utility says the timelines to implement a new methodology are too short. As promised, we have uh, made that uh, connection with Mema Bungule Rule Makanya, who is the transport MEC uh, of uh, Limpopo, and she's going to be talking to us about the resumption of commercial activities at Bulukwane International Gateway uh, Airport. Thank you very much, Ma, for your time this morning. Those findings uh, by the Aviation Authority, 14 of which of non-compliance by the airport, a report back perhaps to start with in terms of how that has been resolved. Uh, thanks, Dudu, and uh, greetings to all the viewers. Yes, indeed, uh, we had 14 findings as the uh, Bulugani International Airport, and up to date, you'll remember that uh, by the time we, they lifted the sanctions from us, we had already dealt with the 11 findings. And as we speak, all the findings that were there uh, have been finalized, and our category has been shifted back to seven, where it was before. Uh, during our uh, public uh, transport month, we have actually launched our month of October at the airport as a way of starting to um, develop the interest of the people of Limpopo to say the airport has now officially opened. And this break was a five-month break. Just perhaps give us an idea of the economic impact of this closure. This is an intimate airport with some vendors operating there. How have they been impacted? Uh, we, we have seen serious um, uh, inroads in terms of the economy. Remember, uh, we had just come out of lockdown. So the impact that our, our tenants at the airport felt was first by the lockdown itself. After that, when we had to resume, we also had a problem that there was no activity at the airport. But the, the advantage as well was that even nationally, we, we, we have seen um, airlines starting to trip in, in uh, very, very slowly. But we have now uh, requested, when we launched our public month, we requested all the stakeholders, our tenants at the airport, to come back and resume activities. But also, we gave them a challenge as a department and as a shareholder to say, how about uh, accessible transport to the airport, not just by cars only, but accessible public transport to the airport? You know, when somebody 
thinks of uh, getting a flight from any other province back to Limpopo, they will think of how do I arrive home. So that is the challenge that we have given to all our stakeholders in the transport sector. And also to the tenants, we have said, let's look at alternatives to say, uh, what are the other activities? When a, a person is at the airport, they want to eat, they want to shop, can we be able to, to then start all those activities? And I'm happy tomorrow as we receive our first flight um, at uh, 7.35 in the morning, we'll be joined by MEC Mukoni of Lidet, where me and him will be continuously talking about how do we then accelerate tourism by the opening of the airport. And we are receiving our first flight tomorrow morning. Mera Makanya, uh, we'll get into those details in a moment, but uh, there has been an indication that uh, the commercial flights uh, of this airport actually contribute to the economy of that province. Are you able perhaps to give us numbers in terms of just how big this contribution is and the absence during this, these five months uh, that has been felt economically? Yes, remember when, when we, we, we say plus or minus, uh, I, I might not be able to give you in terms of millions, but we know that uh, as, as a province, we might have lost to a tune of plus or minus 10 million within the, the space of COVID and the extra five months that we got. Remember, why would I, I make an, um, such a statement of plus or minus around 10 million? It will be about the monies that we charge as the flights lent the monies that we charge for this and that for, for SARS as you cross through our airport. And also, uh, when the, the, the airport was on category two, we were able to also handle private jets. But because of fear, those other people that did not know uh, that we can handle private jets, they did not land. And our projection as an airport in terms of how we collect our income is done uh, when we look at the space and the times, how often do the plane comes in? So that is how we'll calculate the impact of what we have lost because we'll have checked that uh, previously before the category two, we would have received a number of planes that would pay these fees for them to be there. So we have seen the reduction uh, on, on that and the loss was felt. But equally remember, during COVID, the efforts were not working. When we opened, it meant that uh, all the shop owners that we have at the airport were not able to, to resume selling because we lost, lost the five months. So it means that we needed to go back to our own contracts with the uh, uh, people who are renting our space and check that what does the contract say if ever we were not able to open doors for them to be able to operate? How do we then deal with the backlog of the rent at the same time? as the department checking the type of relief that we can give to our tenants uh, because of COVID. So it has had a serious setback. We, we, with the depart with the LIDET department and also with Tourism uh, Limpopo, we, we also analyzed during the conference of uh, Tourism in Limpopo, you'll remember, we on they also analyzed in terms of statistics to say, these are the people that would have preferred to fly in, into our province. And by that, that is how we'll deal with the estimates of how much we have lost. So still some work to be done in terms of finding out the impact to the tourism mm. uh, sector. Uh, so let us talk about the first flight uh, as the airport reopens tomorrow. We are very, very excited. It's just that tomorrow when we're excited, we'll be wearing our masks. Uh, so you might not see the big smiles on our face, but we are very, very excited. There's the people of Limpopo. Uh, we have have um, a school that is coming with the leadership of the bus industry. They have uh, arranged a school that will be coming to do a guard of honor for the people that will be arriving first thing, but will be out there at the airport to receive it. We are thankful on our partnership and continuous discussion to the Air Link that immediately when we were back to category seven, they were able to come back on board to resume the flight. You know, everyone has been affected economically by um, COVID-19. It would have had if we, after all these months, they would have said our schedule does not uh, allow us. But also 
My emphasis, even last week, to the people of Limpopo and any other person who's listening to us is that, you know, we need to start a culture of using aeroplanes because that is part of public transport. Uh, people restrict themselves to something that goes on the road. So we need to start to talk about airspace, that uh, if you are saying, I want to take a public transport to Gauteng or to Northwest or to Free State or to any other linking province, you should be able to start to think about an effort as a public space as well, because we, we are getting into that campaign um, uh, because we, we have seen that people will want to leave the airport to be used by those that are going to work, those that are going to a conference, but they never see it as a very, very quick mode to get where you are. You know, you can be on the road for three to four hours to just to arrive in, in Midrand. But if you are flying, it just takes you 55 minutes. You are already in the how train or in the Uber to wherever way you want to arrive in another province. Mera Makanya, uh, perhaps in those consultations, maybe looking at the issue of pricing as well, in promoting the culture of using airplanes, affordability perhaps also needs to be looked at. Uh, thank you very much for your time.